Um, there is a question from Tara Lynn that says, how as a community can we do to support families of loss? And particularly, I think this is targeting too with Tara Lynn. Um, she says, and erasing the negativity that surrounds selective reduction. And that's one of the big problems we face within our community as well, is that because unfortunately there are TAPS cases that do progress to the point where reduction is a choice is a choice that has to be made and it is making that worst possible decision in order to have the best possible outcome it's a terrible decision but how can we support these families best and expert i'm going to leave that one to you and you're on mute yeah yeah yeah, I Sorry. think uh, when it, with a loss uh, and also a welcome, uh, welcoming a child, it's very difficult because it's a parallel process. So uh, I think uh, they need special help from people who are uh, capable of, of helping them uh, because it's it's uh, yeah we call that a circle uh, of of, uh, of grief that you also have to welcome, then the intimacy and attachment. And then uh, in life you have to uh, say goodbye and then you mourn and then you can uh, welcome somebody again and you have two sides of the circle at the same time so it's very hard for those parents to to deal with this situation so uh, and also when i see helen uh, i think yeah I, I feel that you need good help for for uh, yeah for this mourning uh, about the twins because it's overwhelming uh, what you experienced is that some yeah is it clear what i said mm -hmm. yeah it's yeah it was it was some yeah basically saying that you know it's a very you do need the specialized support but as a community I guess what we're talking about in relation to the members of our community who come in who have lost a twin, can you give us your advice as outsiders to this? Do you have advice for us to be able to support our members and our family members and anyone who goes through this? Anyone? I'm going to open it up to the floor. Anyone? Hi. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah, hi everybody. Um, I look forward to uh, to joining another webinar. But um, just by way of introduction, I'm a neonatologist in the UK, and I, we, we've done quite a lot of research in this area. But on the specific question about sort of termination for medical reasons, um, I've noticed um, quite a lot of staff can be incredibly judgmental. Um, that that a lot of kind of health professionals kind of understand when kind of tragic situations unfold without sort of, um, let's say, provocation, but where women have made a decision to have a termination for medical reasons, for whatever reason. Um, I see a lot of staff being incredibly, or being much more judgmental perhaps about uh, the outcome. And certainly people tend to be less um, understanding or, or empathic. Um, I, haven't, I, I, I don't work with parents, so I can't, I can't suggest how we should um, care for those parents, but I can suggest that the job of all of us as health professionals is to act as, as role models and leaders and challenge these sorts of behaviours when we see them in our own environments. Um, and it is only by kind of raising the debate and the narrative with the people around us that we can influence that hopefully we help people change their, their views and attitudes on this, on this kind of topic. And there is a, quite a lot of stigma around it. And we notice that we have a lot of members, we are very open about it in our group and we embrace everyone because as far as we're concerned, TAPS is a horrible disease. And, um, you know, it has such horrible, it has such a heavy outcome for so many of us. Um, and so we have no judgment at all, but we find that we see within the wider community that there is a stigma attached to selective reduction and, um, you know, these people are often shunned out of groups, other communities that could be helping them grieve and helping them connect and moving on because even in traditional loss groups, these people, these groups, these uh, people are not welcomed. and. It's really sad because they've also made it they've they've made the hardest decision of them all i think and it's really quite difficult and we you know there is a lot of respect to families who've had to make that decision and i i think it's really quite important that we embrace them 
and welcome them. But there, we need to break down the stigma that is around this, absolutely, 100%. Yes, I do think very important to give the right information to everyone uh, so there is uh, for the fetal therapist uh, a major important uh, thing to do the counseling uh, for all parents so yeah um, I think it changes the narratives for all parents yeah so yeah. there can be more acceptance yeah. yeah because these are really life life defining choices that that you take it your whole life and I think you do you make this decision out of love of your children you want the best for them both the best uh, results the, the, the biggest possibility to to have one or two children that can be born healthy so yeah. uh, it I think it's important that uh, that it's not a child that you put away, but that it is there and that you say goodbye to this one. That, that also the, the people around, but also yeah. the gynecologists in other hospitals, that you stay seeing that it's a, it's a twin pregnancy. And that's also, Helen, when I hear your story, and I think you, you, you are a twin mom, and that's also what you lost. You lost one child, you lost another child, and, and then you lose two children. In a twin, so it's it's such a roller coaster you are in. It's incredible, yeah. big uh, big things you are facing. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And um, I am very conscious of the time, which means that I am not able to share the very beautiful videos that we have from some incredible partner organizations that we have. As I've already mentioned, we work with the Purple Butterfly Project, and we have um, and the Sky High Foundation. We have put our endorsement on their current course. I promise you I will put that on our website immediately after the website webinar so that you guys can all read and watch the wonderful videos that have been made. Um, we also work very closely with Twins Trust Bereavement Support who are, again, an incredible group of people uh, who have really made an impact on quite a few other families in our group. And so between Sky High and Twins Trust Bereavement Support, we've had some wonderful, wonderful stories come out from members of our group that they've helped. Um, I am going to throw back to the panel of experts for their last thoughts and their last input and everything like that, being extremely conscious that we are over time. Uh, and I talk way too much, but it's back to you guys. And then we will just round off. I think after that, you guys have said everything you need to say. Uh, yeah, I said twin mom, but you mean a triplet, triplet mom, Ellen. Actually, yeah. It's also a difference, different feelings about all three of the children, I think. Yeah, sorry. And I wanted to add that, that guilty feelings are normal, but you are not guilty. That's a very important difference between uh, the two. Well, um, uh, jo uh, Joanna, I'll already uh, uh, ask you at the beginning of this uh, webinar, uh, if you have uh, comments or, or uh, things for us you want to share so we can learn from it but also all healthcare professionals please uh, send them in so we can make a leaflet for for, for parents but also healthcare uh, professionals thank you absolutely and i've placed my email in the chat again for people to send that information through to um, we will also have this as a conversation within the group next week so it's fresh in everyone's minds I will also, um, I would also really like to mention that again, you have seven days after the webinar that if you want, um, if you decide that something we've discussed is too personal or too sensitive, please email us and we will not publish the webinar. Totally, no judgment, absolutely fine. Uh, to, I think that's everything. We didn't get everything covered and we're finding this is a theme with our webinars. Everyone gets so into them that we just can't cover everything we want. So until we will be going next year, uh, starting again, we're going to come out with our topics. This may be a topic that we reopen, I think, 
I'm not sure how everyone feels. We'll have that discussion later. Um, but yeah, I want to thank everyone for coming today. Helen, first of all, you are amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for sharing your story. This is so important. Um, to the amazing Joanne, who has been a driving force behind organizing everything and keeping me under control. She has been organizing everything. To Monique, to Katja, to Janine, to Lasana and Enrico, who are sitting in the room back there. You guys are all awesome for coming along today. Thank you. I'm sorry all of you didn't get to talk. Um, and to everyone who attended, thank you. Professor Ambleton, thank you again for coming along. So good to see you. I know you'll be in, I know I'll be in contact with you very shortly to talk about some more things about this. Um, and in the meantime, everyone, thank you for coming. If you have questions, please send them to my email. They're in there there. If you feel that this webinar has stirred up any emotions and you want any some help or you need some um, more advice or need to know where to turn, please also send me an email. We will direct you to the right people to make sure you get the appropriate care. And um, for everyone else, webinar will be available in around eight days, 10 days, should we go ahead with publishing it. Immediately on the website will be all the videos that I promised will be in the webinar. Sorry, but for everyone else, thank you so much for coming. I appreciate you all and thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Thank you, Stephanie.